faster out there with track conditions the way they were after the 50 um were you know you talked about in victory lane you knew how sunset was going to be and everything else um and i know that you're kind of you know you're you're getting ready to uh, to work on your car tonight you know it's 7 30 um but real quick let's talk about track conditions uh after the after the last 50. I, I was very impressed with the track. It felt really mighty to me. Um, you know, I, I praise me. Thanks to guys <laughs> who do our track practices. I do like the drive slick. Um, but um, I was a very fast track. I mean, it was just, you know, a matter of taking care of your tires and, and trying to throw the right setup, you know, to get the game. And uh, if you're going to have it underneath you when it comes main and end time and you get out there on that track, you know, you got to division out there in front of you and, and then they're running the track and you're hoping that you know you see them go by and then you turn it to good speed and, and it's like this can be a fast track and then you know you get your pit guys saying oh it looks like it's a little little loose and I'm like ah crap you know hopefully we get this set up and and um, all in all I, I thought the track was pretty good I felt mighty to me and once I got like I said once I got that right front tire on you know my car wrecking ball was back and when Wrecking Ball and Peter chilled together, that is pretty good. It's a nice, smooth ride. You know, you're talking about a 16-4-8. I went to my last times, and, and uh, you know, I got my mom, oh, you were turning way faster times than you were No, I was turning 16 5 0 was my past time in the main event. And that's what I try, try to pride myself on is what I qualify on is when I'm going to run the main event on. I try to be a consistent car throughout the night because it's easier to judge what we're going to throw for a setup underneath the car rather than some radical, off-the-wall, wide-open qualifying time where you ain't going to be running that in the main event. So, you know, trying to run a nice, smooth lap and qualifying is what you're going to run in the main event so you can judge yourself and the car throughout the night on what you're going to throw, throw at it when it comes to main event time. Hey, Arnie, it's Corey. Let's talk about that. You know, let's talk about the main event. 100 laps is a long time to work with. That's a lot of a lot of change on the service. So from the drop of the green flag to the checkered flag, how much did that racetrack change from the first half at the break into the second half? Hey, first of all, I want to say hi, Corey. We miss you, buddy. <laughs> we miss you. But he heard Josh is doing great. We really appreciate him and, and where he's come today. Um, the track had changed a lot. Um, it was a real fast, racy track at the beginning. I would say the first 25, 30 laps, it was pretty fast track, you know, and even with my flat right front tire, I still had a ton of bite. I mean, obviously, you know, I'm overdriving the corners because they got a flat front tire, but it felt really good. Um, but, you know, obviously, as the race goes on, everybody starts moving up and moving up, trying to find something, and then you get a little bit at the bottom, but if you can't hold your car down or get a turn on the entrance, then... You're, you're, you're fighting yourself. So it's just like you just gotta let the car do what it's gonna do and what the track's gonna give you. Well, that's a lot of experience talking right there, taking with the car. I'll give you to win a race. I mean, sometimes that's what it takes. I mean, you can't go out there and force anything because typically when something like that happens, you, you lose it in traffic or get up in the wall. Congrats on the win. That's a huge deal. I don't know if you've been watching Facebook the last couple of days or last day or two. It has been uh, all over Chris Sign trying to put together a big street stock uh, iron giant uh, 50 lapper for 2000 to win. When are we going to see at Willamette? Does it take something like that to get you to Willamette Speedway? Can I just say that I'm going to be down there? Me and uh, Justin will be down there. Um, I don't want to tell you when. <laughs> no, we're going to be down here. We're going to be down there the 23rd of this time, this month, and uh, it's just a matter of uh, we've been so busy, you know, running, running him, you know, uh, long stop there at things. We're trying to get him a uh, rookie of the year because it's his first full season, and and he's coming forward, you know, forward in his driving skills, and, and it's been really good, you know, in the car mission, and he gets into that uh, that mode where something happens, and then you've got to bring him back down and, and again, drive the track, but the track's going to get you. So, um, no, we, I talked to Brian a little bit, and, you know, I talked to Kevin Roberts a little bit, we'd like to put something together even for next year where we can uh, do a little series that they did with the four Bs there at Banks and St. Helens where we run uh, three or four different tracks, you know, put a big curve at the end, you know, put a big point thing and, 
and uh, give everybody the opportunity to go into somebody else's sandbox and play and throw some dirt at each other. <laughs> well, and I think right now that the street stock class is one of those divisions in the Northwest that, that truly is, and I don't want to say on the rise, but on the rise. The class is growing all the time. The competition is absolutely phenomenal. The cars are incredible. The drivers that we're seeing in that class, I mean, to win a street stock race, whether it's Sunset or Willamette or anywhere else right now, that's a pretty tough task just given the competition that you guys are dealing with week in and week out. Oh, it's very tough, very tough. I mean, you know, it was very nice that uh, Chris Ryan and, and, you know, we had uh, Daniels come down from Elma. Uh, we missed Kevin Roberts this year because he was really good racing against him last year in the one Jim's 100. Uh, missed Daniel and Hill. I mean, there was good cards that didn't, wasn't able to make it to the show. And and uh, that's really disappointing because, you know, it's nothing better than running neck to neck with somebody you know is going to run you clean and it's going to be a fast car that's going to give you great competition um so uh it is tough and, and you know it is sort of scary to go to somebody else's sense it and, and try to play at their, at their level you know especially when you don't know their track or their setup or anything like that what you're going to get yourself into but you just go with the best you can and and throw it out on line and see what happens well, and I was going to ask you about that when you said you were coming up to Willamette because Sunset and Willamette Speedway are on opposite ends of the spectrum. The little bull ring, you know, to the big fast one third mile. That's a whole lot of difference in track and setup and how you drive the how you drive the car. How much change do you put underneath you on your race car when you go from track to track? <laughs> it sounds really silly. I mean, we really don't change it. Now. We don't even change our gears. Um, well, we always turn uh, I went down to Willamette a couple times last year. Came up a little short. I think I finished fourth the first night. Had a caution thing, got sent to the back because I stopped on the track. And, and if thanks, you know, I, I appreciate what they do. They do a thing where you don't race to the yellow, you know, keep everybody safe. And that's, you know, a lot less, you know, damage to the cars. And, and I marched back up to finish fourth that night. And then the last race of the season last year, we went down there and we were really strong with our G60s. And we went with uh, the split the first race down and we went back down with G60s. And, I really don't see a difference. Um, we go down with the same setup. It's just you're just carrying more speed into the corner, and you're able to get on the throttle a little bit sooner than you are at bank. So, um, to the sounds of it, that's what it sounds like the kind of drill. They don't lift that much there. So, you, know, you just take your tires that you can take to, to change your stagger. I mean, as far as planning or anything like that, we really don't change much for these tires like what they're at and what we have in them. Well, Arnie, you know, it's it's a pleasure and stuff to, to talk to you, you know, not only in Victory Lane, but, of course, here in Moxie Media Promotions, you know, on, on our speaker podcast. Uh, you're number four, man. This is, you know, this is crazy. Uh, number five this weekend? Yeah, we're going for number five. You know, I'm, I'm blessed to say that you, you even this, this year wasn't even supposed to shake down about, like, this is, this is a shakedown of car for me and, and you know, get Dustin and that he, and getting him that rookie of the year, keeping him up as far as we can in the point, keeping him consistent, you know, getting him to be uh, a superior driver and he's going to be. And it may not happen this year, but he's going to definitely be someone to reckon with next year. He's just, he's just got to get into it. Um, you know, we'll look for number five. I mean, if it happens, it happens. If it doesn't, you know, we just want to keep our nose clean, keep the car clean. And see that we're getting ready to go down to 11, and I definitely don't want to do no body work or any. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to minimize. I've been out on the car all week, this week, you know, between the two of them, between the 100, you know, I just really take the toll on you. And we're, uh, we've been nonstop at banks for, I think, a couple of months. I can't even tell you. They run into each other. So, um, nonstop. So having two weeks, you know, at least a week off is going to be really refreshing so we can go down to Lebanon with open minds and, and a, a different outlook and, and be excited about uh, rolling into the pits and unloading. Well, Arnie, uh, you know, I totally agree with you. And Josh and I talk quite a bit off the air before we before we start the show here at Northwest Dirt News. And when we talk about the street stocks, Justin's name is one of the drivers as the up and comers that come up quite a bit, and he's having a, a really good season this year. I mean, we're seeing a lot of progression out of him in the 18 car, and and we've seen some trophy dash wins. And you know, he, he's really on the come up. And I know that that makes you proud as a father. And and you got to race him. You're going to have to race him door to door here pretty soon, and that kid's not going to give you an inch. I mean, that's not going to be an easy win for you when he starts banging doors with you. I you know. I, I say time and time again, you know, and he, he tells you in that thing, we have our little rivalry here in the shop, and, and it, it ends with, okay, I'll just tell your truth, get to work on your car. 
<laughs> you know, it's, it's really hard. It's, and, and I told him that many times that he gets out in front of you and made a hand and you're harder to pass him than anybody else. Yeah, the reason yeah. is, I know, this, I, I know this car and I know his line. And, and so a lot of people change their lines from lap to lap. And if, if he just can, you know, keep his hand on his shoulder, run his line, he's going to be a tougher one for me to pass, you know, especially because I don't want to work on both cars and I don't want to give him a bump again. But no he's doubt. very good in the trophy dashes. And, I'm very impressed with his uh, last trophy dash. I had to sit back and watch him grow and go at it. And it, it, it for him to win by a no, you know, a fraction of a nose is very rewarding. And, and, you know, those kind of wins is what's going to put it under his belt and let him know that he can do it and uh, that he is a strong competitor out there against these guys. No doubt, and we're looking forward to watching him grow as a driver, and you know, he's going to be competitive. But, you know, a lot of people talk about you. They talk about the 33 car. Now, when you look at race cars in the Northwest, you've got one of the most interesting numbers. If you look at your car close, that number on your car, on the race car, is not 33. It's Psalm 33. He's my protector. He's my shield. He's a little my head. I'm a strong believer in Christ, and I know that anywhere I go that he's going to be with me. And uh, if I give him the glory, he's going to keep you on us away. So um, it was just in my race way back in the day over 20-something years ago. And Justin's driving Scratch. That's my old car that I used to race. And I'm, I'm actually driving a sister to the car. And, and uh, my number was three. And then you just brainstorming on what can I do with three? What can I bring out, you know? What, uh, what book can I bring out of the Bible, you know, to, to you know, who he is in my life, and, and so um, we found Palm three three down like this. That is the nail on the head right there. Oh, I personally love that. I think it's a great thing on the race car. You don't see a lot of people do stuff like that. You don't see a lot of people put their faith out like you do. And as a Christian, I can tell you that I really appreciate that. And, man, it, it's awesome to talk with you in this segment. And uh, looking forward to seeing it at my track at Willamette Speedway and, and, and turning you guys loose and watching a, you know, a big show. You going to come down and say hi? <laughs> You'll, you know I will. I, I guarantee you I'll be down there talking with you, but I'm looking forward to seeing you guys. All right, man. Sounds good. I appreciate it, Arnie, and, uh, you know, definitely uh, get back to work. Uh, your brother Mike uh, can't do it all. I mean, even though he does, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish I could just sit at home and eat dinner and have it be done for me. That should be beautiful. That should be beautiful. <laughs> well, you, uh, you get Wrecking Ball out there. You, you give your brother a big old slap on the butt for me, and uh, tell him we'll see him tomorrow night. All right, man. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Arnie Case out there. Man, I'll tell you what, he is, uh, you, you know, and you talk about his, his car, 33, and a, a lot of people don't know that. And, and me, as, a, as an announcer, you know, there's, there's some people that are religious, some people that aren't, you know, some people that believe in different faith or whatever. So I kind of keep that to myself, not, not saying because I don't care or anything, but it was because, um, uh, who's that one? Okay. So, I, you know, not that, you know, not that I, you know, don't want to spread that, but I'll tell you what, you know, knowing Arnie and stuff for as long as I've known him, um, and we don't go, you know, as far back or whatever. It's just that, you know, the racetrack wise, but I've known his wife, uh, Jennifer, for many, many years. We, we went to school together, you know, from middle school to high school and to see her from not being a racer type girl or whatever, uh, to then when I saw her a couple of years ago at St. Helens, she was up in the stands and I was waiting for my wife, Trisha and stuff to come off of work. And, and I was there to, to watch the last open kind of comp race there at St. Helens. And, uh, I look over and I'm like, man, I know who that girl is. <laughs> and then all of a sudden she comes up and she goes, Josh. And I'm like, Jennifer. And she goes, yeah. And I'm like, well, cause her last name was something else. And she goes, yeah, it's case now. And I'm like, all right. And she goes, yeah, my husband and my son and Bob. I'm like, are you, are you shitting me? <laughs> she goes, she goes, no. And she goes, my husband's out there. His name's Arnie and blah, blah, blah. And when I saw him, I, you know, I was looking, she's always kind of been in these, you know, kind of not real uh, skinny guys or whatever. But I, when I saw him, like, holy crap, that's a big dude. <laughs> I'm like, how you doing? I'm like, okay. So now I'm, you know, not, I'm not like hitting on her or not like that, but I mean, you know, we're hugging and stuff and all of a sudden here comes, and I'm like, Oh crap! Here comes Arnie. <laughs> Hold on a second. This, I don't know if this is gonna go. And he's like, "Hey man, how you doing, buddy?" And I'm like, "Cool. How you doing?" Yeah, I don't know, know if it was like the thunder before the storm type deal, but no, Arnie's a good dude. He's he's a lot of fun, and just you know, he's there as a as a racer. He's a hardcore racer, but I think he does it 
fun first. Absolutely. You know, he he always, I mean, going into racing and stuff, and, and, and he'll, he'll tell anybody, you know, God, of course, first, you know, family, and then, you know, it's fun to be out there. If you're not having fun, throw that stuff away. I mean, just like it, just like all of us, if you're not having fun doing what right. you're doing, just like this, you Absolutely. know, I mean, this gets fun. Well, yeah. badly, yeah, yeah. Um, it it's it's been it's been hectic, but you know, at the very very end, you know, realistically, it's fun, um, and, and that's what we want it to be is to have fun.